Okay, welcome to a new Harry's Garage, and today's car is the McLaren 570S Spider. Um, this is part of their new uh, sports series. They've divided the, the cars they produce into sort of three groups. And you have the sports series starting with a 540C, and then you have the um, super series, which is the new McLaren 720S. And then sitting right at the top is the Ultimate Series. Um, we've just seen the um, Senna version come out, and before that was the uh, P1. I, I, I did a lot with McLaren when the 12C came out, and then the um, Spider version, the 650S. And then I, I also spent a lot of time in the McLaren P1. But I haven't really revisited since they've done this um, sports series. And, it's, and it's, I think it's a great move by McLaren. Price point's terrific. The 540C starts the 540C, £126,000. Amazingly attractive when you think the, something like the 720S is sitting, I think it's 208,000. So a, a real competitor for, for 911 Turbo and that sort of arena. That's why I wanted to get this car in. Doesn't really matter if it's a Spider or a, a 570S, we will get to that in the moment. But let's go and have a closer look. Okay, well this um, being the Spider version of the 570S, this has a list price in the UK of £164,750. But this particular car has a few tasty extras on it, as you expect from a press car. Um, so the, the Vera Boot, uh, 3500 for that. The dark roof, which I think really suits it, 2190 Wonderful wheels, uh, those 10-spoke forged alloy wheels, diamond cut as well. 2690 for the wheel, diamond cut adds another £1,500. Silver brake calipers, £910. I think that's a bit cheeky because you've got to paint them some colour and to charge extra for silver, I don't quite understand. But they are carbon brakes as standard now across the McLaren range, which is good. Um, then sports exhaust, 3,370. Designer interior, we'll get to that in a moment, 2,500. Carbon interior as well on the wheels, two and another 2,500. Lux pack, um, which includes sort of um, power seats and steering wheel adjustment. Heated seats, which I particularly like, uh, because it's depth of winter here in the UK. Um, 7,280 pounds for that little lot. Um, and the security pack on top, which gives you parking sensors and camera and stuff like that. So, 31. £1,400 worth of extras on this car, making a grand total of £196,150 is what McLaren will charge you for this car. That doesn't quite sound the bargain I initially thought it was going to be, but it makes up for it in other ways. One of the McLaren's uh, party pieces are its doors, dihedral doors, so they hinge at a funny angle like that and sort of look spectacular. It's what I want from a car like this. But just before we go any further, I wanted to show you this a little bit because I think this is really clever. Um, if you buy the Spider version, McLaren very thoughtfully put these buttons here, um, which lift the tonneau cover. And the idea is if I press this and then we turn around to here, you will see that comes up. Now, the idea of that is if you're going uh, touring this car and you're going to dash down, say, South France or whatever, and you're not actually going to lower the roof because you're just going down the auto route, you've got extra luggage space just in there. And I also think, well, if I was just doing a little bit of a Tesco shop or something and I was got a few bags, I might use that boot as well because I'm, I, to open the front, I have to get in to press a button and then get out and do the front boot. With that, I'm just opening the door and I can touch that, shut the bags in and then press another button and it goes down again. So I really like that feature. And the other button I wanted to show you is to lift the engine lid. So that bottom button. Well, I thought it was the engine lid. What it all, all it does is actually this little flap here. And that gives you access so you can top up the water and oil here. But I can't actually show you the engine. I know if I'm doing a numpty, but I can't find a button that lifts this bit. It's all part, it's like a Porsche Boxer or something. You're not allowed to see the engine, um, unless you're probably screaming at YouTube now and saying, no, you just press that button. Well, I can't actually get into that. And I think it's just done at a service. Other details on this car I really like. Well, it has a purpose, doesn't it? This sort of rear spoiler here, and then a rear diffuser, grills everywhere. How the lights, or LED lights go around here. I got this car, this car is particularly dirty actually, because it's, it's January, it's muddy around my, where I live, and uh, it was absolutely smothered in mud, this car. It's not a fun car to clean, as it's just a nightmare actually. There's nooks and crannies everywhere, and you never get it quite clean. Um, but it has a sort of purpose, 
monotonous about this car. Um, it seems to just not sort of go smoothly through the air. It's looking at every opportunity to suck air in and then expel it outside. It has that feel of an F1 manufactured car. Oh, to just show you the front. One of the surprises is there doesn't seem to be a safety hatch on it. So you pop a button on the centre console and it's open. I presume you can't do that if you're barreling down the autobahn at 150 miles an hour. But yeah, good space in here, fire extinguisher jacket and a bit of power um, if you need that and a screen wash. One thing, one thing at the front though, I always think this is, it looks a bit bland this. Um, I don't know why, in the McLaren badge, I don't, it doesn't look a great design to me. But on the plus side, there is a sort of element of uh, P1 here, this light and this giant scrapes into here and the um, intercoolers in there. And there's a lot of aero going on with this car. If I just come around here, there's a huge amount going in, feeding radiators at the back of here. But it's actually almost more complicated than for its own good, because I noticed that it's sort of the gaps are all a bit haphazard on it there's a real lip here and things and i think it's just there's so many scoops and scallops and the doors folding up and down there's sort of the, the all these gaps are sort of wider than you expect if you, if you look at um, um, a ferrari 488 or a lamborghini that's their metal pressings and they pride themselves how sharp they can get it um, with this with this sort of more open design it's always a bit gappier and not quite as matching as you expect but anyway, it really does the business. Uh, I want to show you it outside, so let's go and take it for a drive. Okay, I just, this car's got keyless go. I just wanted to show you the key. It's a really nice lozenge. Um, you don't need that to get in. I just put a button under this bit of the door here. Up it goes, and then it's sort of scalloped. The sill, it has this carbon tub, this car, but they've scalloped it since 12C, so it's easier to get in and out. I love the clarity of the dash on um, McLaren. I don't bother with two dials and uh, it's just the central um, taco and then a, a digital speed indicator in the middle. Um, one thing does get special note, a steering wheel with no buttons on it. Are you listening Ferrari? It can be done. Yeah, steering wheel just for steering the car with. Um, very nice screen here. Um, here I choose between a sat nav there. Um, ventilation on here as well uh, really clever how this all works even got heated seats on this model because it's the Lux model which I'm very grateful it's, well, it's seven degrees outside it was three degrees when we started down here um, well this is where life gets even more interesting because this is um, I've started it up and it just starts in a sort of normal mode but um, I can if I press active then I can choose handling normal sport track uh, on that one and on this side it's gearbox or normal sport and track again I have it in sport once um, if I press active and it just livens up the gear change I'll move away in normal mode and you'll see it always as these systems do they sort of grab a gear as soon as they can for economy it's not really what I'm interested in um, so that yeah that's how it works started it up how do I get moving well I just press drive and away you go so this is, as I say, in normal mode. There you are, it's sort of barely doing 2,000 revs and it's changing into another gear, as you expect. It's even got stop-start on this car. It's just some of the uh, extras, there's a little bit of carbon dressing on the steering wheel. It's got this extra um, Bose Wilkins stereo in it with this peculiar, um, where well, it looks like a karaoke mic on the, sitting on the dash. Um, that's actually some yeah, tweeter system or something, uh, all very clever. I'm, in, I'm actually just going to go straight into active and just get a little bit of a move on. Active is, and I've got suspension in normal, so it's really nice the way you can split the two um, character, the characteristics of the car, the gearbox and the handling and the ride. Even now I can feel this is a very special steering feel. This is, this is Lotus-like, and I mean that in the best possible sense. There's a lightness, a delicacy um, to the steering, and it's moving, and it's this suede-covered wheel. And I know it's going to be, as time goes on, I spent a week in this car, and I keep coming back to how good the steering is on this car. It rides okay as well. It's very definitely in normal mode. 
a livable type of, um, of ride, and the, just how it's set up. If you get uh, if you get in the Hurricane, there is this sort of heavy, slight heavy feel to it. You know, the feel forward drive. This feels instantly delicate, a bit like the Ferrari uh, 488. The steering isn't quite as quick as in the Ferrari, um, but it has more of a Ferrari-esque feel than well the other cars in this range. I suppose the Audi R8. Well, it's a chalk and cheese now, the R8 already. Not only have you had the special event getting in with those diadra doors, and it just gives you a sort of feel of supercar before you even press the button to start the engine. Little story on this um, sat nav. Um, remember on the on the 12C, it was a bit of an issue because it didn't really work. The, the press cars, um, they, none of them actually had a working screen. I found the backstory out. Basically, basically, they, they wanted the landscape. It was Rob Dennis's uh, was saying we all use our iPhones, etc., and we're used to looking at a screen like that. Why can't we do it with a 12C? So they got a company on board who said they could do it, and then they didn't deliver on time. And then they had to swap um, deliveries. So it took a while for McLaren to um, get right, but now they have sits in there beautifully and actually you put your hand underneath here and it all works very well so yeah it was worth the persistence even though when it first came out the first 12c it was all a bit of a nightmare for McLaren sound of the engine just at these sort of revs it sort of sounds okay uh, but it's it's sort of not tuneful and I saw it described in Evo as industrial and that's sort of the sense I get hasn't got the music quite the music that you might want but then again it's it's quite a nice companion um, it, this engine likes revs I've discovered um, which doesn't help economy you can see the range we've got three quarters of tank and it's saying the range is 125 miles I think if I'll go through the menu I've averaged about 16 17 mpg which is not very good um, over, I've just done just over 200 miles in it, but I've done a bit of commuting and things. Um, so, yes, yeah, it's a twin turbo engine, 3.8 litre in this um, version, 570 horse, I say, 443 um, foot pounds of torques. Um, thing about the torque figure though, it's not delivered until 5,000 RPM, and it's between five and six and a half. That, so, you're always actually needing more revs than you expect. And we'll come on to that again with the Ferrari um, 488 massively bought uh, torque. I think that's 566 um, pound foot of torque, so considerably more 100 and what is it, 130, so almost a third more. Very different feel. Just looking at this screen for these um, ventilation, I love that the rider is actually the person in the photo they've used the graphics. He's wearing a crash hat. That sort of gives you a sense of purpose and what this McLaren is all about. Anyway, on, on to my favourite bit of road. And then we'll just get a sense of what this car's all about. I've got it in just normal mode, so normal handling at the moment, but just sport on the gearbox. Let's give it a go. acceleration figures 3.1 to, uh, to 60 and uh, I saw Autocar at a test of the uh, 570S the coupe version at 6.1 seconds to 100 miles an hour I mean, extraordinary performance I mean and yet when you first get in it it doesn't give you that sense of outrageous performance it feels really quite easy to live with um, and not quite as quick as the uh, figures suggest but then you dial up some revs and oh boy does it fly to get manual press the button in between the um, transmission switch the choose between the track down full manual control then i've got these paddles and another really nice feature of mclaren is they, they rock so i can change up and down on one paddle on the one side or use a normal convention and have left hand to go up and the right to go up again Wow, it's, I mean, it feels so balanced down a road like this. 
a bit crazy quick, I have to say, um, but rides well, just delights in this sort of road. This steering feels like it wants to, it wants to turn in all the time. It, it's happier almost doing corners than it is going down a straight bit of road. It, it, it's, I can't call it nervous, but it is super direct. Such with purpose is the only way to describe it. It's a really good bit of kit, this I have to say. And um, yes, it's got this folding roof. I haven't even mentioned it, but it feels utterly solid. There's not a squeak and rattle, or whatever. I've got a nice feature. I can put the rear screen down and actually get some more sound into the cabin without having to have it fully open. Or if I just put that back up and I drop the speed, there's no one behind us, I'm going to drop the speed down. And I'm going to, here we go, and I'm going to put the roof down. Very handy. It takes, they say, 15 seconds to do this. Are we all there? And windows up. Oops, I'm not quite finished yet. I must have gone slightly too fast. Now well, there we all are, all folded up and the roof's open, and up we go. I'm just going to again, I'm going to put it into sport handling. I might just try track gear once for the full effect, then the dash changes. It's pretty good, I have to say, heated seats. It's not crazy drafty with the, uh, the rear screen action as a uh, deflector. So it's sort of two cars in one, as all the best convertibles should be. Um, what a machine this is. Slight, uh, great change of lights as well on the dash once you've got it into um, sports mode, track mode. adjustable dampers on this um, rather than the crazy fluid system that's on the um, Super uh, Series and the Ultimate Series. This has conventional um, coil springs etc. Really impressive bit of kit. Right, I'm going to pull over here, just put the roof back up and then we'll go through the pluses and minuses of this car. What are my likes and dislikes? Well, on the dislike side, um, I think the, the way the price ratcheted up to nearly 200,000 was a bit of a surprise. It's a 15,000 pound premium over the regular coupe version, which sitting at about 150,000 sounds really good value to me. That This feels way more special than an Audi R8 or a 911 Turbo or something like that. So that's attractive, but this car in this spec, 196, well suddenly it's it's in another realm. I said that, the other rivals are now over 200,000. The MPG and um, the, the smallest tank, I'm, I'm struggling to even do 200 miles on a tank, which is a bit of a disappointment. Um, but, on the, on the build quality, just that slightly flakiness, that strange uh, body fit on some of the panels, it keeps telling me that I'm 29,000 days short of um, a service, it's nearly 10 years, the car's only a few months old. Another thing I'm not quite so sure about is the sound of the engine, the way it needs revs all the time, and this sort of industrial sound, it's not as sweet as a normally aspirated uh, engine. But then again, this engine does deliver, and it has that high rev feel of a McLaren race car. So that's the positive. The downside is just the sound. Um, but the positives, major positive, is this feels McLaren all the way through. I haven't got any carryover parts of another make. This throughout is 100% McLaren. And there's this way it goes down the road the handling is unique. It might be a bit too much for some people, but it's so hypersensitive on the steering. Um, 
it, it, it is on a mission um, to set the best A to B um, pace of any vehicle out there. But you you feel inclusive. I don't feel intimidated in any way. I feel I want to push this. I would happily take this on track, even the Spider version. I think it'd be delightful. Um, the brakes, all carbon. They're not over servo. They're there. It's like a really solid pedal. It's old school sort of race car feel. But that's what I expect from McLaren. Like they're not making it for um, any numpty to drive really quickly. So I love that. Yeah, this is the way the roof works. Like there's no rattles, no nothing in here. Um, mighty impressive. So yeah, in conclusion, I think wonderful. Great they're doing this uh, sports series. Long may it continue of bringing a McLaren name to a lower price point. I never thought that McLaren would sit in the bracket with an Audi R8 and 911. I always thought it would be a, you pay more than a Ferrari for a McLaren, but no, it's the other way around. So I really like that about this car, and I can't wait to see how it develops in the future with the 720S and what they're going to do with that vehicle. But for the moment, I've really enjoyed this McLaren. I hope you've enjoyed the video too. If you have, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.